Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is advent day number 13 and for this video I finally got around to showing you guys how I do my skin with coloured pencils. So first things first, I'm going to tell you all the coloured pencils that I'm going to be using today. So I'm using the Caran d'Ache Luminance coloured pencils and I'm just going to tell you all the colours that I'm using from left to right on this picture. So I'm using the white, the raw umber 10%, the raw umber 50% and the raw umber. I'm using the Anthraquinoid Pink, the Burnt Sienna 10%, the Burnt Sienna 50%. I'm using the Brown Ochre, the Burnt Ochre 10%, the Burnt Ochre 50% and the Burnt Ochre. I'm also using the Burnt Sienna, the Castle Earth and the Primrose. Okay, so those are all the colour pencils that I'm using for these six demonstrations that I'm doing today. So again, these are all Caran d'Ache Luminance colour pencils. I'm going to be doing another video using Prisma colours instead because obviously they're different colours. But there's also colours in there that are similar to these ones so you can follow the same sort of rules. And the blending that I'm doing with these colour pencils will be similar and the same that you can apply to Prisma colours because they're both wax based anyway. Okay, so for today's video I'm going to be demonstrating six different skin tones that I use regularly and I think are the most common ones. So the top three are going to have cool undertones and the bottom three will be more warm undertones and along each row I'm getting progressively darker. Okay, so I've used a variety of skin tones so you can see how these few colour pencils can be used in different ways to create different skin tones. This is only part one of my skin tutorial. Next time I'm going to be doing a portrait and I'm going to really slow it down and talk to you about the process of how you can apply these methods of what I'm showing you today to do an actual portrait and bring it all together. But for now, let's get on with this tutorial. Okay, so the first skin tone that I'm going to be doing is the one in the top left and this is really good if the person that you're drawing has a pink undertone to their skin and they've also got really light skin. So after I've done each skin tone, I'm going to just leave a list next to it of all the colour pencils that I use for each skin tone. For this first skin tone, I'm starting off with the raw umber 10% colour pencil and I'm using this with very little pressure at all to just add a bit of a base layer. So the darker part of the circle will be at the bottom left and then at the top right it's going to be much lighter. And then I go in with the raw umber 50% and I just use this again with a very light hand to apply a bit more shadow towards the bottom left of the circle. I really like using the raw umber colours for both the cool and warm undertone skin tones. It's a really good neutral colour and it's really good to get a nice foundation and to get some nice shadows with. And then I'm going in with the burnt sienna 10% across the circles. So this is a really good cool undertone skin tone and I use it in a lot of my drawings for skin tone. I use it in almost every single drawing I do and I use this a lot with the burnt ochre 10% to create my skin tones. Again, I'm using very little pressure, I'm just using a bit more pressure towards the bottom left of the circle where the shadow is, but otherwise I'm using lighter pressure as I get towards the lighter parts of that sphere that I'm creating. So next I'm going to go in with the Burnt Sienna 50%, so this is the Burnt Sienna that's slightly darker than this one, and I'm using that to apply a bit more shadow to the bottom left of the corners. And then I'm going in with the white colour pencil, and I use the white a lot to blend with, especially with the cool tones. When I'm blending with the white colour pencil, I do apply a bit more pressure in order to get it all to blend nicely together. And using this white pencil is the main way that I get a really smooth base to it. Because then I just glaze over with the additional colour pencil, so a bit more of that burnt sienna, to get that colour back because it does wash out a lot of the colour. But to get the smoothness, I do use a really light colour. With the cool tones, it tends to be white. With the warmer tones, it tends to be a primrose colour or a burnt ochre as I get towards those darker tones those darker skin tones. So now that you've blended it and made it really smooth with the white pencil you don't want to then wreck that by adding more additional layers on by applying it vertically down so what I do is then when I'm glazing the colours I use the side of the lead rather than vertically putting it putting the sharp point down onto the paper so when you use the sides of the lead the colour comes off in a smooth layer over that smooth coloured pencil layer that you've already done and it doesn't apply some really horrible pencil marks or scratch off some of the wax that you've already applied which is really good because it adds the colour and the depth back into it without ruining all that smooth work that you've done. So once I added a bit more of that burnt sienna 10% and the raw umber 10% I then used the white pencil just to blend out bits that I needed to and then that's it for this first one. So once I've smoothed out all the bits that were a bit imperfect with the white colour pencil I'm now just going to list all the colour pencils that I use for this first skin tone. So 
So moving on to the first warm skin tone, I start exactly the same as I did with the other one with the raw umber 10% just to get a foundation layer down and I'm just applying a bit more pressure towards the bottom left as I did with the other one to create a bit more shadow on that side. I'm then just going to go in with the raw umber 50% so the shade darker and use that on a bit more of those shadow sides just like I did with the first one. Now I'm going in with the Burnt Ochre 10%. So this is instead of using the Burnt Sienna and the other one, for this one I'm using the Burnt Ochre 10% and I'm using that across the whole of the circle and I'm applying a bit more pressure towards the bottom left where the shadow is in this sphere. And then on the shadows I go back in with the raw umber 50% and I keep layering these colours so that when I blend it out with the white or the primrose colour I have enough coverage down so that I get a really nice smooth first layer when I blend it out. Also, I'm adding a bit of Burnt Sienna 10% to the shadow parts leading up into those lighter regions. In order to make sure I had enough coverage down before I blended out, I added a layer of Primrose and a layer of Burnt Oak 10% across the whole of the circle again, just to make sure that when I blended it out now with this white colour, that I had enough down so that it would blend really smoothly, otherwise it can look a bit grainy if you don't have enough coverage down. Just like before, the white has washed out a lot of the colour, so I go in and I glaze those colours over again. So I'm glazing over the Burnt Oak 10% again, just to add a bit more of that warmth back to it. And I'm doing that with the side of the pencil rather than straight on. And then I'm also adding the shadows back with that raw umber 10% and that raw umber 50%. I also glazed a bit of the primrose over it because it's a warm, nice cream colour. It added the warmth back to the skin tone a bit. If you're drawing a skin tone very much like the top left but it has a bit more warmth into it, you can add a bit of the Burnt Ochre 10% over it just at the end, glaze it over to add a bit of warmth to it if it's not completely cool. Next I'm going in with the slightly darker cool skin tone and I start by using the raw umber 50% for the shadow straight away rather than using the raw umber 10% but I'm using the raw umber 10% on the top of where the lighter regions are. So I'm using the raw umber all over the circle but I'm using the raw umber 50% towards the shadows parts and the raw umber 10% where the highlighted regions are. And then I added some of the burnt sienna 50% to the shadowed parts and then I'm just layering up those raw umbers again. Because this is a slightly darker cool skin tone, I could use some of the darker Burnt Siennas and some of the darker raw umbers a bit more. Next I'm going in with the Burnt Sienna 10% and I'm using this all over the circle and I'm using a bit more pressure towards where the shadows are and then I'm just covering it lightly on those lighter regions. I'm adding some more of the raw umbers and a bit of the Burnt Sienna to the shadows as well to darken it up a bit more. So I'm starting to apply a bit more pressure now with the layers to get them to blend and start to smoothen out a bit. And I'm using the Burnt Sienna 10% on the shadowed parts to blend the colours and I'm using the white colour pencil for the lighter regions to blend the colours up there. Again, when you want to smoothen out the layers, it's really important that you use a bit more pressure and also it's important that you have enough layers down in order to be able to smoothen it out. So make sure you have enough coverage before you try and blend it out. Once I blended out that first layer, I went in with the Burnt Ochre 10% and I used this to add a bit of warmth to it, even though it's a cool undertone, it's likely that the face will have a bit of warmth to it in certain parts. So I just glaze over with that Burnt Ochre and I also go in with that pink colour to just add a bit of a healthy glow to the skin tone. I found that this pink tone is really good to add on the cheeks to add a nice healthy glow and it's really pretty on girls to use as a nice blush colour. What you just see me using there was the Caran Dash blender that they give you and I just used this to give it a final smooth over. Also there's no reason why you can't combine these skin tones so if you're working on a portrait of for example a girl with very cool undertone skin and certain parts are a bit darker then you can use one of the darker skin tones but if parts of it are a bit lighter then use the first cool undertone. So these skin tones will really complement each other well and you can use them all together to create a really nice realistic drawing. On the second warm undertone skin tone I'm doing now, I started off exactly the same with the 50% raw umber on the darker shadows leading up to the lighter parts where I use the raw umber 10%. So then I'm using the Burnt Sienna and the Burnt Ochre 50% on those shadows parts and then I'm going to just lay on top of that some of the raw umbers as well. 
I then add a bit of burnt sienna 10% to the shadow parts before I go back in with that burnt ochre and start to build up more layers and start to blend out the first layer. Quickly before I blend out that layer I'm adding some of the darker raw umbers, so the raw umber and the burnt ochre 50% to the shadow parts and I add a bit more coverage. I'm also adding that pink colour to create a nice healthy glow to it and then I'm blending it all out with that burnt ochre 10% by adding a bit more pressure in order to get all the layers to blend together. And then on the lighter region I just press a bit harder with that primrose colour to lighten up that part. Once I've blended out that first layer, I go and glaze over with the burnt sienna, the burnt ochre 50%, the pink colour and also the raw umbers. And then finally I'm using the white colour pencil to add a bit of highlight. It's really important that once you've got the correct softness that you want, that you keep glazing over with those individual colour pencils in order to get a really rich tone. For the last cool skin tone I'm doing a much darker skin tone and I'm starting off by layering with the Castle Earth brown colour. So I'm layering this all over and I'm applying a bit more pressure towards the bottom left hand corner. I'm then going in with the Burnt Sienna 50% and now because it's a darker skin tone I'm applying these pencils with a lot more pressure than I did before. So I'm applying darker colours and I'm applying them with a bit more pressure. Then for the lighter regions I'm using the Burnt Sienna 10% as the highlight colour. I glaze over as well with some burnt sienna to create a bit more warmth to it and then I just keep glazing over with that brown colour and a bit of the dark raw umber. I also glaze over a bit of the pink colour in order to get a really nice healthy glow again because this pink colour just really adds a nice glow to it and just really brings it to life a bit more. Finally I'm moving on to the darkest warm undertone and for this I'm using quite a few colours so I first start off again by using that Castle Earth on the darker regions as a foundation base but for this one because it's a warm undertone I'm using the Burnt Sienna a lot more and I'm also using the Burnt Ochre 50% with a lot more pressure over the whole area. I then use the Burnt Ochre 10% as the highlight colour and I blend this out with the Caran Dash blender that they provide. I then glaze over with those pink colours and with the Burnt Sienna 50% to really add to that tone to make it look really realistic and add a bit more depth to it.
Okay, so here is all the skin tones finished. That's all I'm doing for today's video. In the second part, I'm going to be doing a portrait and showing you how you can use these techniques to do an actual whole portrait. So if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on that. Also, make sure you share this video if you found it useful. I'll leave all the links to my social media sites in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.